Hello students, in this video we are going to discuss about the abnormal mass and want of factor. We have already discussed in the previous sections about the colligative properties. We discussed about the properties like elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point, relative lowering of vapor pressure and osmotic pressure. We have learned that these properties depends upon the number of particles not upon the nature of the particles. We have discussed the formulas in order to find out the molar mass by using these properties. So we have learned the formula like this elevation of boiling point that is delta Tb is equal to Kb into m where m is the molality delta Tf that is the depression in freezing point that is equal to Kf into m where m is molality Relative lowering of vapor pressure that is P0A minus PA by P0A is equal to XB where XB is the mole fraction of the solute and the last one is the osmotic pressure which can be determined by the formula pi is equal to CRT where C is the concentration in terms of molarity. So these are the colligative properties which we have discussed in the previous videos. And we have discussed that the colligarity properties help us to calculate the molar mass of solute. So what we can write here? The colligarity properties was used to calculate the molar mass of unknown substances. That is the molar mass of solute. But in two conditions, the molar mass calculated by the colligarity properties are accurate. That is, if the solution is dilute and if there is no association or dissociation of particle in the solution. So, in these two cases, only we can say that the molar mass which is calculated by the colligative property method is said to be accurate. If the solution is dilute and if there is no association or the dissociation of particle in the solution. As we know that the colligative property depends upon the number of particles not on the nature of particle. So what we can write here the colligative property increases with increasing the number of particles and is decreases with the increasing molar mass because we have learned the relation between the colligative property and the molar mass. So what we have learned that colligative property it has inverse relation with molar mass mb so whatever the formula we have learned for the different colligative properties in that the relation between the colligative property and its molar mass of solute have inverse relation that means if the colligative if the molar mass increases colligative property decreases that is a point which you have to learn remember here and similarly number of particle increases colligative property increases here i am saying the colligative property it can be pi it can be delta tb whatever what is the relation their relation is inverse to the molar mass so that means molar mass and colligative property we can say there is an inverse relation and as the number of particle increases colligative property increases so here just now we have said that only in the two cases the colligative property method which is used to calculate the molar mass of solute is accurate that is if the solution is too dilute and also if there is no association or dissociation of particle. So first let us discuss what is this association and dissociation of particle and how it affects the determination of molar mass. So, first let us discuss the association of particles. In certain solvent, generally the non-polar solvents, the solute molecules undergoes association. So, association means where two or more number of molecules exist in the combination with each other to form bigger molecule that you can see here the smaller sized molecule that is shown here these molecules when it get associated or we can say that the molecules exist in the combination with each other 
to form bigger size particle so here it is shown here that uh, the two smaller particles uh, they get associated or we can say they exist in the combination form so at the time we are getting a bigger size particle we can call it as an associated particle that means the particles now it become bigger size after the association of uh, the two particles here similarly three or even more molecules uh, can exist in the combination state uh, with each other to form a bigger molecule so here the smaller size uh, particle they get uh, they exist in the combination with each other to form bigger molecules so definitely when you check here uh, the size of the particle now it is increased because you now smaller particles get associated to form bigger size particle when we take one example here that is acetic acid acetic acid formula is ch3 cooh so acetic acid they exist they exist in the combination of two so two acetic acids they exist in the combination form that is shown here ch3co twice this is because when we expand the formula for acetic acid that is ch3 c double bond o oh this is acetic acid this is one acetic acid molecule this is the other acetic acid molecule so here there is a intermolecular hydrogen bond that you can see here here there is a intermolecular hydrogen bond between the oxygen of one acid molecule with the hydrogen of the other similarly here also the oxygen of this and with the hydrogen of this there is a intermolecular hydrogen bond that is written here as h bond so because of this association because of this hydrogen bonding we can say that uh, now the molecules are in the associated form so this is explained uh, this association is explained through this uh, example so the acetic acid here they are in the association form so this is called as association of particles here it is not necessary that only the two particle get associated like uh, three particles for example three particles can associate to make a bigger size particle that is also called as association so here it is shown two particles are existing in a combination with each other to form bigger molecule this is called as association of particle so during the association of particles we can say that now the number of particles get reduced because when you see here now when you count here the number of particle here nine particles are there and these particles get associated so definitely what happened now the two two particles are in the associated form so definitely what happened the number of particles get reduced and what about the mass the mass is also increased so this is the normal mass normal molar mass of the particle that is the actual mass but as in the solution the particle is undergoing association so what happen now instead of the single this together is said to be the one particle now this is considered to be one particle so definitely when you check the mass of this one will be greater in compared to the mass of the single particle because now here the two particle are in the association so here we what we can say that uh, during this association number of particle get in decreased but uh, it turns to the bigger size particle so the definitely the mass will be observing that will be greater that is actually the called as observed molar mass so here when you compare the mass of this particle that is if you compare the mass of this particle with the mass of uh, this particle so definitely now the particle size is bigger so definitely the mass will be greater so the observed molar mass is greater than the normal molar mass so what we can conclude from this one because uh, due to the uh, 
association of particle the number of particles get decreased the number of particle is decreased because you can see that now the particles get associated so definitely the number of particle get reduced that means uh, the colligative property also decreases because we have learned the relation number of particle increases colligative property also increases that means they have direct relation so here as the number of particle is decreased because of association therefore the colligative properties which is observed that also decreases so what about the molar mass because here due to the association bigger size particles are formed that means the molar mass is increased so if you compare the mass of single particle and the associated particle definitely the mass of this will be greater that is the observed molar mass is greater so during the association of particles we can say number of particle get decreased that means colligative property get decreases but the molar mass increases because colligative property and molar mass have inverse relation so since what we are observing the molar mass of the particle that will be actually not the correct one that is greater than the normal molar mass so now we can call this mass as abnormal mass so it can be corrected by using the wonthoff factor in 1886 wonthoff introduced a factor which is called as wonthoff factor that is represented in i small i it is expressed in small i that is actually it is to express the extent of association or dissociation of solute in the solution so it can be calculated by any of the formula that is i is equal to expected molar mass by abnormal molar mass that is uh, the normal molar mass divided by abnormal molar mass next uh, it can be calculated by the formula observed colligative property by calculated colligative property or it can be calculated by the formula total number of uh, moles of particles after association or dissociation by total number of moles of particles before association or dissociation so these are the formulas which can be used to find out the i that means the wonthoff factor so we'll be using the formula here i that is uh, the wonthoff factor we can uh, calculate by this formula that is normal molar mass by observed molar mass and when you look at here in the case of association because when you compare here the particles after association now it is a bigger size particle that means definitely the mass will be greater so the observed molar mass that is actually will be greater than the normal molar mass so here normal molar mass is in the numerator and observed molar mass in the denominator so when you compare here observed molar mass is greater than the normal that means denominator is greater than the numerator so when the denominator is greater than the numerator so definitely the value will be i value will be lesser than the 1 so here will be getting the value of want of factor during the association of the particle the i value will be getting less than 1 now when we talk about dissociation of particle dissociation of the solute molecules molecules of the certain substances it can be acids bases or the salts it dissociate or we can say ionize in a solvent to give two or more particle that can be expressed this through this diagram here this is the particle which in the solution state it will ionize and it will ionized into greater number of particle you can see here a single particle it can ionize into two it it will ionized into two ions are formed so here the dissociation of solute molecules we can say that these particles dissociate or ionized in a solvent to give two or more particle 
so very well known example that is the dissociation of sodium chloride we know that the sodium chloride in the solution state that means when it is dissolved in the water it ionizes into sodium and chloride ion that means one particle after dissociation now it turns into two that means uh, a bigger size particle is uh, now it is broken down into two smaller particle and this is what called as ionization so the sodium chloride that is an electrolyte which ionized in the water to gives ions if you take another example magnesium chloride which ionizes into a single magnesium ion and two chloride ions so here the single one single particle is ionizes into two particles here the single particle is ionized into three particles because two chloride ion and one magnesium ion is formed that is what called as dissociation here that means the bigger size particle it ionizes to gives the smaller particles so what is actually happening when you look at here the number of particle is increased because here in the case of nacl one particle is giving rise to two particle here one magnesium chloride is giving rise to three ions so definitely in the solution state the number of particles get increased due to the dissociation of the particle so due to the dissociation of the particle what is actually happening the number of particles get increased and what about the mass because here the bigger size when it ionizes to form smaller size so definitely the mass get reduced now the when you compare the mass of the normal particle and the particle which is formed after dissociation definitely these are the smaller size particle so definitely they have a lower mass so this is the normal molar mass for the particles and after dissociation what is observed that is the observed molar mass now this is actually we can say that observed molar mass is lesser than the normal mass normal molar mass so what we can conclude here due to the dissociation of particle number of particle increases that is clear from this diagram number of particle increased that means the colligative property also increase because the colligative property and number of particle have direct relation because colligative property depends upon the number of particle so due to the dissociation number of particle is increased that means the colligative property also increases and colligative property and mass have inverse relation so if the colligative property increases that means the molar mass decreases and this is also clear from this diagram so here we can see that the observed molar mass is lesser than the normal that is the it is lesser than the normal molar mass so that's why it is called as abnormal mass now it can be corrected by using the want of factor so how we find out want of factor i that is equal to normal molar mass by observed molar mass now when you look at in this uh, here observed molar mass is lesser than the normal molar mass so that means uh, here when you apply this one here the numerator is greater than the denominator so definitely when we solve this one i will be always get greater than the one so that is in the case of dissociation of particle we get i greater than the one but there are some solutes which neither dissociate nor associate so there are some solute which neither undergoes dissociation nor undergoes association so in that case in the solution state also we can say the particles will be as it is there is no change in this one this is in the solid state this is in the solution state the particles are not undergoing association and even it is not undergoing 
dissociation so the particles now as it is it is there the very good example is glucose which is neither undergoes association nor dissociation so what about in this case the normal molar mass and what is the observed molar mass that will be equal here because here there is no association there is no dissociation that means what the mass is observed that will be the real mass of that solute particle so what we can conclude from here the number of solute particles is not changing here because the particle is not undergoing association or dissociation so there is no change in the number of particle and here there is the no change in the mass so mass does not change if you want to find out the colligate want a factor here by using this formula here these two masses that is normal mass and what is the observed mass that both are equal so what we can say that i will be equal to 1 so from this what we can conclude here that is if the particle that is undergoing association in the solution state at the time that is it undergoes association at the time i want of factor is lesser than 1 if it is undergo dissociation that means the number of particle is increased so here i will be getting greater value than the 1 and if there is no association and dissociation at the time the number of particles remains the same therefore the i will be equal to 1 so by this we have uh, introduced the term want of factor which is used for correcting the mass which is calculated by the formula colligative property so the colligative property formula which we have learnt uh, that is delta tv is equal to kb into m the delta tf relative lowering of vapor pressure osmotic pressure so we'll be using this formula in order to find out the molar mass of the solute if there is no association and dissociation because in that case if there is no association and dissociation i will be equal to 1 so in that case we can directly use this formula to find out the molar mass because at that time what the molar mass we are getting by this formula that will be the correct one but if there is an association or dissociation of the solute particles so at the time if we are using this formula at the time what the molar mass we will be finding by this formula it will not be the correct one that will be the incorrect one so how we can correct it by introducing the want of factor now you can see that in each formula i is introduced so why we are used in why we have introduced the i factor in order to do the correction so if there is an association and dissociation of the particle so definitely the colligative property observed will be either higher or lower depending upon the association degrees so in order to get the correct molar mass we have to introduce i here so now we'll be using this formula to find out the molar mass of the solute if the solute undergoes association or dissociation now how to find out the i value the i value can be find it out by the formula that is total number of moles of particle after dissociation or association by total number number of moles of particle before dissociation or association a very good example it is shown here like k2so4 k2so4 we know that in the water when it is mixed with the water it definitely dissociate because this is actually a salt so when it dissociate it give rise to two potassium ion and one sulfate ion so what we can see that one particle is now it be after dissociation now it turns to three particles so that is what the number of particle is increased here so how we find out the i value here that is by formula total number of moles of the particle after dissociation so after dissociation how many particles are there three 
but what is the total number of moles of particle before dissociation before dissociation there is only one particle that is one mole of k2so4 so before dissociation there is only one particle and after dissociation there are three particle so that is 3 by 1 so i is equal to 3 this is the way to find out the value of i but what happen when uh, it is in the solution state what it can see that it is undergo association so when it undergoes association so the other molecules get uh, the other molecule get uh, associated with this so what we get here we get a dimerized form that means the two acetic acid molecules they are in the association that is clear from here two molecules get associated so here this is called as association and here how many number of particles are before sorry after the association now you can see here only there is single particle but uh, before dissociation two particles similarly the two acetic acid only undergoes the association that means uh, what is the total number of moles of particle before the association that is two so that is uh, one is formed after the association and uh, before the association there are two particles so here the value of i is equal to 1 by 2 so that is the method to find out uh, i value by using a formula for example want of factor for glucose as i told you glucose does not undergoes association or dissociation so the value of i is equal to 1 but in the case of um, nacl nacl because there are two ions are formed one nacl is giving rise to sodium ion and chloride ion that means two ions are formed that's why the value of i is equal to 2 in the case of calcium chloride calcium chloride cacl2 when it dissociate it gives rise to calcium ion and two chloride ions are formed that means total number of ions one calcium ion and two chloride ion that means total three ions are formed that is 3 by 1 that is i value is equal to 3 so this is the way to find out the value of i when a particular electrolyte is given to us so when you look at in this case due to the dissociation here the value i is getting greater than the one and because here there is association the value of i it is getting less than one that is 0.5 here it is getting because uh, two molecules are getting associated so here i value is 1 by 2 so that is what we have learned if there is a dissociation i value is greater than the i value is greater than the 1 and here i value is less than 1 now next we have to discuss about degree of dissociation degree of dissociation that is represented by alpha that is actually nothing but what we call extent of dissociation that means how much extent of dissociation is taking place it can explain through this diagram because if there are total number of these much particles are there from this only these particle is undergoing dissociation because only in certain electrolytes only there is 100% dissociation takes place but in many cases it not like that from this you can say from the total number of particle we can see that only this much of particle is undergoing dissociation that means only this much number of particle dissociate and the rest of the particle it not get dissociate so that is what the degree of dissociation shows that is how much of dissociation is taking place that is what we called as extent of dissociation so this can be calculated by the formula that is total number of molecules which is dissociated by the total number of molecules from the total number of molecule how much particle get dissociated that is what gives the extent of dissociation for example in a particle 
electrolyte we can see the in the solution we can see there is only 10 percent particles is undergoing dissociation and here 90 percent of particles are dissociated what it shows that from the total number of particles only the 10 percent particles are undergoing dissociation and what here shows that from the total number of particle only this much particle that is the 90 percent is undergoing dissociation that means a very few percent that is only the 10 percent particle not undergoing dissociation so this diagram shows that what is that extent of dissociation that can be calculated in percentage that means from the total particles how much particle is undergoing dissociation that is what uh, the 10 percent dissociation shows here only the 10 percent particle is undergoing dissociation so here the degree of dissociation can be calculated by using this formula that is uh, if a if a it is a uh, dissociate into n numbers uh, that means uh, uh, like a is uh, n numbers means uh, if uh, there is a case of electrolyte NaCl, NaCl 1 is giving rise to 2 because uh, it will give rise to Na plus and Cl negative. So here let uh, the particle A is dissociate into n numbers of ions. So that is represented here. So initially before the dissociation there is let 1 mole of uh, particle is there. And what is the initial stage? At an initial stage, there is no partic no ions because uh, before the dissociation, there is no ion in the solution. Okay, so let alpha is the extent of dissociation. So at equilibrium, how much particle get uh, remain here? That is from the one alpha particle get uh, dissociated. So how much is remaining? That is one minus alpha. And here it is uh, because n numbers of ions are there. So it will be at equilibrium stage. And now the concentration remains n alpha. Now what is the total number of moles at equilibrium? Because at the equilibrium this much number of moles of A is there. That is the undissociated one. And this is the total number of moles which is actually now it is ionized. So when we make the sum here that is 1 minus alpha plus n alpha and uh, what is initially initially how much is there only one we have taken so divided by so i is equal to the total number of moles after the dissociation that is in the numerator and here is the total number of moles before dissociation because before dissociation there is only one mole of a so that is what uh, the formula comes here i is equal to 1 minus alpha plus n alpha by 1. So when you solve this one we will be getting the formula alpha is equal to i minus 1 by n minus 1 where n is the number of ions formed after dissociation. So when we take an example here. So if I take an example like NaCl because in the case of NaCl what will be the n how we find out n because it ionized into two ions two ions are formed so what will be the value of n is equal to 2 so how we find out 2 here uh, sorry what is n here n will be 2 so alpha is equal to alpha is equal to i minus 1 by 2 minus 1 so when you solve this one what we get uh, alpha is equal to i minus 1 so from this we can find out uh, when we get i we can find out alpha next we can find out the degree of association so here also how we find out degree of association means how much extent of association has taken place so for that let a is the particle and n numbers of a is getting associated so we get a a n an here because what is n here 2 because two particles are associating to form a single particle so what the n in this example it is 2 so wherever there is a dimerized this is called as dimerized form in that case 
n will be equal to 2 here. So here initially there is 1 mole of this one and 0 mole of this one because before association 1 mole of A is there and here 0 mole of this one and uh, let alpha is the extent of association. So what we get here at equilibrium 1 minus alpha and here A by N we get uh, A by N because here the number of particle is reduced here. So what will be the concentration that is alpha by N. So when you solve this one by the method by the formula so we get uh, this relation that is A is equal to sorry alpha is equal to formula I minus 1 by 1 by n minus 1 and what is n here how much particle get associated that is in this case 2 acetic acid getting associated to form single particle so here what will be n n is equal to 2 here so this formula you have to remember because in the problems instead of solving the whole thing it is better to make the use of this formula instead of doing this whole procedure. Similarly for the case of dissociation what we need to remember we have to remember this formula. So instead of doing all these better to learn this formula in doing the problems. So this is what actually about the normal abnormal molar mass and for this remember the formula introducing the want of factor if there is any problem in which the electrolyte or we can say the solute which is undergoing association or dissociation at the time we have to make the use of this formula instead of this so the problem will be there on the basis of want of factor that will be going to discuss in the next video so this is all about this video have a nice day